welcome back to another episode of Bush TV. Today you're chilling with Uli Lugutle as usual and we got our guest in the house, Frank David, and horticulturist. Frank, welcome. Thank you very much, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Oh, that's good, that's good. So tell me about you, Frank, because I mean, horticulturist, well, people don't know that. I, mean, I didn't even know that until like a couple of minutes ago, you know? Yeah, so please, too. please, please elaborate to me what horticulture says, please. So when you talk about horticulture, it's, uh, we're talking about implementing the activities of our nature, hmm. back to the roots, where we already forget our farming activity, but I'm mostly related to the eco environment, okay. mostly farming. Okay. Yeah, so as a horticulture, it's I what I train people to do farming. Agriculture means restoration back hmm. where the farming was mostly impressive and spiritual. Hmm. Where we lost all the value of being uh, spiritual people. Okay, so what? Please explain to me what is the whole spiritual people got to do with farming? Yeah, because um, if you see youngsters today, they don't really even um, know their roots. If you don't take a lot of so there's a lot of drugs being distributed mm -hmm. in the streets, a lot true, of true. Uh, activity like crimes and all sort of things. Because these youth, they are not uh, exposed to something which is very important and valuable to their lives. Which right. is farming. Which is farming. Which is that, I mean, I understand that because I know in the next 10 to 20 years, whoever's a farmer will probably be the richest man on earth. Yeah, of course. Because uh, farming, you know, don't expect to get money in a month or so. But in the value, which the rewards which you get from farming and TV, they are almost higher than money can buy. Okay. Because wow. In terms of food, people were struggling with the food, or mostly farmers, that people were connected to the spiritual. It's been people who praise God or whatsoever. If you are not a farmer, you can't be a good spiritual person. And when did you get this whole farming inspiration? Because I mean, I understand you're a horticulturist, right? Yes. So I mean, you learned that, I'm guessing, you know? Yes. So you studied it, you, you, you went through it, and then what was the next plan? I mean, farming is not easy, because I understand that you know, it's it's a white man's world in South Africa. Of course. You know, so a black man like you, you know, joining farming and coming in that industry, how tough was it and how did it even all begin? Uh, because we as Africans, we always remember these farmers. We were hunters. Mm. We, True. that's our, our heritage. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to white person, dictated that they, they are inventing farming. That's the wrong thing, because here in Africa, that was our profession from the beginning and uh, beside my education on farming it was very impressive because i did my horticulture then i started about farming and it was very nice but mostly because of the chemical they use which affecting people in disease and sickness okay i tried to change my farming and i did went and started mostly biodynamic farming which is more deeper than just farming biodynamic Bi Bi biodynamic farming okay yeah and what is biodynamic farming uh, I would say it's almost as, um, the same as um, organic farming, but it's too deeper. It connects you to the ground, to the, to the land, which we all must remember. We are the children of the land. Oh, the children of the land. Children of the soil. Yeah, yeah. Children of the soil. Yes. Yes. Run away from it. <laughs> so it connects you to the ground, it connects you to the spirits, and uh, with all the farming system, you have got a freedom in yourself if you get involved in that farming. It's more spiritual. But it's very interesting because, especially if we educate our youth in that, I think we can reduce quite a lot of crimes. But how do you think? Can re how do you think we can reconnect with the youth or, or, or talk to the youth to kind of get them onto that? Let's farm, you know. Let's let's stop doing all these other things. Let's do this. Let's plant in our backyards. Let's you know. Let's be eco-friendly. Yeah, eco-friendly. How do you get that message across? Yeah, that's why we need a certain uh, institute to get mostly involved in, in implementing farming than just making more successful and more money. We don't need more successful people anymore. We don't. We need people who are like lovers of many kinds. We need storytellers, storytellers sort of, and we need people who can be able to educate the youth. Something which is very important, value, because we can't teach them that you can be rich, rich tomorrow. Yes. And you can't be able to access that money. I understand. Then that's useless. But in agriculture activity, it's a real thing. If you teach them how to farm, you give them a small garden at their backyard, they will produce something. So it's and all about guidance. It's all about guidance. And if there's somebody who's willing to do it, I am willing to do it. Trust me, and I got all the support I need. 
definitely will change a lot in our community. So, you have something coming up, right? Yeah, uh, it's mostly about educational program and it's motivational as well. And it has got to do with uh, my experience in farming pro uh, project which I did uh, all over and also to educate these youth in the community who can access information to make sure that they get the information in um, in the communities. And where is how's that information you get and where, how, what time? Um, I group up a lot of people who are experiencing certain different different um, uh, industry including my eco environment mm -hmm. and I'm going to be mm -hmm. teaching them about carbon footprint, set of carbon with our plants which are indigenous to South Africa, which also cleans the air which we breathe, so which is does. so advantage to the people if they acknowledge all those kind of things. So, but I will let you know all the details on our next uh, next week episode. I will send you the details of that. Please do, please do, so we can actually just share it out to the viewers here and actually just you know, show them how we can actually just kind of find means to get together and actually do this whole eco-friendly gardening and, you know, but I, I hear you talking about the air, because I do know we, we breathe carbon dioxide mostly. Yeah, of course. Right? But, uh, so how's that plant and the indigenous plants and every like how are they going to help us breathe clear air? Uh, because we've got a lot of um, uh, toxic, which is also produced by car, carbon. Mm -hmm. okay, yes, yes. When they drive, they mm -hmm. clear the bending of the tires and all those, those things. And we don't have a proper uh, refuse uh, where we can throw them away. But the only means we can help to solve this situation is if we plant some speckworm, which is indigenous to South Africa, drought tolerant and easy to grow in South Africa. You don't need. Are you able to, 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 to plant it in, for instance, the CBD? It's adapted in everywhere, every land southern regions. So we just have to implement the idea? Implement the idea and knowledge people about it and be able to people trust, um, uh, start so trying to, to this plant. Yeah, there's a lot of information which we can be able to share with these youth. So tell them here very quickly how they can get a hold of you. Okay, um, starting by own company which is naturally natured, which also uh, have got to do with uh, biodynamic farming mm -hmm. as well as um, carbon emission programs. And as well as it also um, do green monitoring, monitor the green environment. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so the contact number of me is 076 Or you can get me on my email on naturalnatured at gmail.com. That's 076 guys. Or you can get him on naturalnatured at gmail.com. That's it, guys. You got it right here. Yeah. Thank you. And we're back, and now we have Patience Bueno. Patience, welcome. Thank you very much. How are you much. doing today, sir? I'm okay. And yourself? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, man. You Thank know, you. everything is good, actually. Good to but hear. But first of all, Patience, you know, I have never had uh, had, a, had an interview with the soul, you know? Mm -hmm. So please tell me, who mm -hmm. is Patience Bueno? Uh, Patience is an Angolian artist mm. um, that uh, was inspired by his father. Is dead, of course. Uh, my father is the reason why I came to South Africa. Okay. Yeah. So I was born in Angola, and when I was still six of, or seven years old, uh, my father gave me bread, milk, sugar, and he pointed the finger to someone. He said, "Go and give to your uncle." Then I said, "That was uh, in uh, 70." Six. I wasn't even 19, thought of. Yeah, 1976. <laughs> <laughs> it was in 1976 because our country got independence in 1975. In 1976, my father gave me bread and milk mm -hmm. and the sugar. And he said to me, go and give to your uncle. And the uncle was a South African. That was my first time I saw a South African. Is it? Yeah, in my life. And how was that? How was that? that, that first I didn't know what a South African was. Uh -huh. So then uh, my uh, aunt always, when I grew up a bit, my aunt always reminded me the question that I did ask, because I can't remember that question that I did ask my father when he presented me uh, With my the sugar. Uncle. Yeah, when he gave me sugar milk, uh, I think it's sugar tea milk, and to give to my uncle. And uh, I asked my father, 
is he on your side of the family or in my mother's side of the family? Then my father told me, go first. Then when you come back, then I will tell you. So when I came back, the father didn't tell me, but I knew from that day that that is my aunt. Before even we get to that uh, question, I had a mission. <laughs> I had a mission to fulfill because this is what brought me here. So I came, I was a young Okay, person. but you can't tell me that though, sorry. You can't tell me that though, because that you're just going to kill my interview, you know? Oh, okay. You're kind of making me look like I'm the, <laughs> I'm the one that doesn't know, you know, something here. <laughs> so I mean, it's all about the history first, and then we get to what you're doing. And yes, why, because why you're doing the, 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 this history is linked to this. Mm -hmm. Because my mission that brought me here, it was my father's dream. He was also an artist. So my father's dream was one day when apartheid is over, he will come down and train skills to his brother. Because this is what he told me later on. When I asked him who are South African, he said, no, no, that uncle is our brother, he's our South African brother. Something wrong is going on in their country. This is what they told us. And we knew South Africa is our, our brothers. And uh, not knowing at that time that I'm talking about 76, Oliver Tambo was there, Paolo Jordan was there, mm. Tabu Mbeki mm. was there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And later on, uh, uh, what is it? Jacob Zuma joined Jacob. in, Chris Ani was there. So all the South African and the, the, the man that was uh, uh, a minister of. Uh, I don't know, secret service, whatever, for a long time. They were there, all of them. And this, I met them in parliament several times. They speak Portuguese better than myself. Yeah. <laughs> I spoke to Paulo Jordan. He puts me off. Because so I... you telling me your Portuguese is a thing? No, no. Because I went to study in Congo, uh -huh. where Portuguese is not it's spoken. Not, it's not spoken, yes, I understand that. And Paulo Jordan was all that time in Angola. He had his own radio, actually the radio of uh, freedom fighters in Angola. Wow. He was communicating in Portuguese. So his Portuguese is better than mine. <laughs> yeah, this is what it is. So with that idea, yes. um, that thing that were in me, and my father, because of war, uh, you know the, the history, what uh, the history was. Uh, our government didn't want to give the freedom fighters to the, the apartheid. To the apartheid yeah. government. And, and they told them, if you don't give those people to us, that means the South African freedom fighters and Swapo, we are going to destroy your country. Then our president, uh, uh, Olden, Ol, Olden Neto, huh? Agustino Olden Neto, no, Agustino Neto, Agustino said, Neto. yeah, Agustino Neto, he said, yes, they are our brothers, if you want them, you must come through us, then they said, this is what you want, they said, yes, so, and the South African army went in, yes. wow. destroyed well, everything. You know, it wasn't even like that, then. so I mean, here in this history right now, it actually just brings me a whole lot of love for Angola, because I mean, for them to actually fight for our people, you know, to actually stay in the country, it's a very, very big thing. It was. But tell me about where the art comes, you know? Tell me what, what inspired you to, to, to become an artist, to become, a, to become a, an art collector, you know, because I hear you, I mean, I mean, you got things from Mbuko, Mbuko um, Museum, in Nigeria, in Nigeria. you know, what is this? Yeah. Tell us about this, tell us everything. We want to hear okay. it. Yeah. Uh, First of all, I was born from uh, a father who was an artist. Mm. If he was uh, still alive until today, perhaps he would have not loved what I've become. Sorry, because yeah. he didn't like us to become artists. He mm. wanted me to be the doctor or the lawyer of the family. The, the, the stereotype of a black yeah. family. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but art was in me. So they, I did everything they told me. Finish your high school, I finished, I did the Latin and the philosophy, I was affluent and they sent me to university, I went, I studied and everything I finished. So then, you paved the way. Yeah, then I started as a professor and later on as a businessman, I had a petrol business in Angola. Then, the dream supposed to hold up. 
I have to fulfill this dream. And it was my father's dream to come one day to South Africa and train skills to his brothers. Now he's dead. I made my father's dream my own dream. I wanted to be uh, a respectable uh, entrepreneur, uh, manufacturer. And uh, according to the geography, I studied uh, uh, history that I studied and economics that I studied at uh, school. South Africa was always among the top seven in the world, industrially speaking and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it was always in the, so I said, okay, I can't go wrong with my two dreams in South Africa. One is to train skills to my brothers. Two, to become a respectable uh, manufacturer. And when I came, yes. It all happened. Yeah, uh, it was hard. Mm -hmm. I only worked. Actually, yeah, I yeah. believe so. Yeah. You know, I worked in with 3,000 US dollar, which was not enough to build a company, so I had to work hard to buy equipment one by one. And uh, lucky enough, I lived in the Constantia. You know what they say? Yay. If you are working with uh, four millionaires, you will become the you fifth become one. The fifth one. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I got the assistance I could to buy some equipment. Then I went to see Mandela in his office. We are talking about 1998 so now. Mandela. Yeah. You know, I'm South African, I've never seen Mandela. Hey, man. I, I push. So you're one of the lucky ones. I push. This is the promise that I gave him. That's why this thing is here. Okay, so, yeah, we still going to get to me. We get against <laughs> this. You know, we get into this. I see, I see all of this behind me, and I'm like, what is this? You know, you got to tell us about the sculpture here. Yeah. You know, the art. I gave him a two. Mm -hmm. And the real one that I was, uh, I promised him is this one that he didn't get. Oh, so we have the real one too. This is the real one. This is the real one. Yeah. Well, I touched it first, you know. So yeah. I made them in bronze. I gave him, but this one means a lot. Means much more. I will wow. explain to you. So I went to him. I wanted to get some uh, credit. So the whole uh, two weeks, I was preparing what to say to. To the man, I studied him at school. In my <laughs> yeah, in my history book, I studied Mandela. I was asked question and answered them. So now is a person that I have to meet as a president. So that time he came to Parliament, and we went to the office waiting. Instead of coming by the front door, he came he came by the back door. Then suddenly he came. Who are you? You know, his voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So look at him. Stancy Mandela. Everything that I was supposed to say went. So my mind went blank. I was just <laughs> looking at like Then they said, no, no, this is the artist that brought you that stage. You see, oh, thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> wow. but uh, two weeks later, he wrote me a letter and it came to my place in, uh, in uh, Constantia. And my landlord was jealous. See, how come my president, because he's a white man, how come my president is not writing to me, he's writing to you? <laughs> so I took the letter and I read, and it was uh, fantastic. Wow. Then I became so serious. So you've come a long, long way. You've yeah. come a long Please, I mean, I mean, I'm really, like, this art has really got my eye right here. You know, yeah. please tell us about the art, because I see the Mandela painting right behind me, and then I see the sculpture, the bronze sculpture. So please tell us about that before we even get to the, you know. Okay. Uh, okay, then I wanted two I, I wanted two things from Mandela. His permission to make to make his portrait, commercialize it, and to give me free green light to train skills in the community. So when he wrote me that letter after two weeks, then I saw a lot uh, a load on me responsibility. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Actually, without him being there all the time, Mandela became my mentor. Because that, it was a heavy. Someone I studied at school. Now I'm in a country where he's right next to him. Yeah. Now you, you know? Yeah, now he's my president. So, and now he gives me green light to go ahead. I love what you just said right there. Now he's your president. Yeah. I love the fact that you have this unity amongst black people. 
Yeah, because I was in the country and I have to respond to the number one office and he was sitting in the number one office. And he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so any decision he could take in the country, it will affect me. Mm, you know? mm, yeah. mm. So it was a pleasure for me to uh, knock hard and um, I gave him one. I gave him one statue also of him and the grasa, but this is the most important one. You guys see that right yeah. there? Yeah. This one is the most important one. Why is this the most important one? I made a bronze one. Bronze is more costly. Uh -huh. This one I'm saying is the most important one for a reason. When I was growing up, my grandma used to tell us to take soil. You know, if you are going to Jobek and you are from Cape Town, mm -hmm. you will tell us to take the soil of Cape Town. And when I will go to Johannesburg, I must take the soil from Jonas Beck and mix the two soil in the cup and drink it. So, according to my grammar, that uh, soil that I will drink will protect me against, sick, against sicknesses and also it will protect me spiritually and uh, emotionally and things. I will feel like I belong to my new area. Because I've got it both soil in the middle. In you, yeah. In you, it's in your, in you, it's in you, in you, and everything is is there. Yeah. So tell me, what is what is this? I mean, I mean, I hear about Mandela, yeah. you know, and I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. But tell me about this. This is uh, a item that I collected. I bought it from uh, a lecture uh, from Egypt. Hassan is dead now, and I lost also. But uh, Hassan actually uh, sold it to me and I bought it. It's 3,300 years old. 3,300 yeah. years old. Among the wow. stuff that were dug in, uh, in the mummy's tomb, this is the item. So I bought it. And uh, if I'm selling it for a reason at the moment, because I'm. Uh, I've been knocked down over and over. Mm -hmm. I uh, escaped to death <laughs> on an N or two. Lucky you, yeah. but yes. In the farm. So I lost my teeth. I'm going blind. And at the last minute, Lufthansa had to knock me down out of uh, my ticket that I bought to go and get the treatment mm. in, uh, in Germany. So this is what brought me here. Sell my uh, artwork. Well, I think it's a pretty good market for the mm -hmm. art, and the art industry. It's very, very good. I mean, I'd like you to actually show the people what you actually have here from Ibiko um, Museum. You know, this is yeah. a crocodile. You can tell the viewers about it actually. Yeah. This is another collection of mine. Is the whole crocodile. The bag is made out of the whole crocodile. You can see wow. even the legs and the feet and are the there. Teeth, the, the head, the teeth, everything eyes, everything are there. So, this bag was uh, made in Nigeria and is uh, uh, 59 years old. Wow. You guys see this? This is pretty amazing. 59 I mean, let's go, real crocodile teeth. It's a real, real crocodile. Yeah. I don't even know what you call their feet yeah. or hands or whatever it is, but yeah, it is what it is. So it came from the museum and the pepe are there. And uh, anyone who wants it, you can uh, ask for the details, you will get it. Um, but anyway, I, I, I love hearing what you just told me, I love it, I love the story, but I mean I hear that you have you know, troubles getting home and with, with, with the airlines and everything, I mean what, what's going on there? Yeah, I, I'm an artist, I like expressing everything in art, uh -huh. maybe let me show you what I've expressed. Okay, so this is what, you know, this yes. is... This is my uh, expression. Okay. Uh, I uh, had a long discussion with uh, uh, Lufthansa. Lufthansa, uh, which is the airline? Yes. Okay. I, I can't read uh, because of my eyes and I'm waiting for operation. Which is your senior citizen. We yeah. should understand that. Yeah. So I bought a ticket and uh, things didn't work out. And I told them 52 days before my, uh, Your flight. my flight that uh, things went wrong. They must postpone the flight. They didn't want. They told me, no, we sold you a ticket that, is not, uh, that was not uh, uh, refundable. I said, yes, they told me it was not refundable. But yes. I can postpone. 
They say, no, no, it, it was not also postponable. I said, no, this is, they didn't tell me that. Mm -hmm. And I tried to negotiate with them. They didn't want, I told them, look, it's a, it's a, you are a company that I respect a lot. They yes. didn't want. And this is how I express my disappointment. I told them it will be bad if you go on. Because wow. you came too low. This is how I explain. I'm a very a, a lower person compared to Lufthansa. I told them, keep your dignity. No, they came too low. The trees are dead. So what do they will have? Accident. So I put like a hook they put there to steal my flight ticket money for yes. in a thousand seventeen. So you and it's fourteen thousand yeah. on the flight that is gone. Yes. And they knocked me down and So I'm where there. can people find you? People wanna help you if people, you know, wanna wanna reach out to you and you know, if the Lufthansa wants to reach out to you, where can they find you? Because I mean honestly this is bad, bad business. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, listen, they can uh, find me on uh, uh, Patience Bueno. Patience Bueno. On Facebook. Yeah. Patience Bueno. Patience like women's name. Yeah. Bueno is a M B U E N O. Patience Bueno. That is on Facebook. And on uh, 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 my telephone number is 074 Oh seven four six four four three nine zero nine. You heard that, guys, and you can find him on Page Bueno, Facebook, and the email address. Yes, sir. We wait on that email. Patience Bueno, patience like women. Bueno M B U E N O three digit three at gmail dot com. You heard it, there guys. You find me. Patience Bueno three at gmail dot com. Please help this man and please find. Lufthansa Airlines and help this man and get his 14,000 Rand back. Patience, thank you for coming here today. Thank you very much. I appreciate much. you coming to sit down with me. Yeah. And I appreciate your time, sir. Me too. Thank you very you much. Go. Thank you. Well, well guys, you heard it here first. We had Patience today and we had Frank in the house and, and horticulturist and an artist. You heard it here first, guys. Bush TV. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, I would like you to press the like button and subscribe so that you can get other videos and please share with your network groups and if you have any other comments please comment on their website thank you